Hi everybody, it's Annette Densham and you're live with Obsessed today and uh, like it's almost Christmas and it's we're all getting a little bit silly and my guest today is going to give us a little bit of insight in how to find a little bit of zen and peace and calm. So I'd like to welcome Rebecca Tishbon. She is a medical scientist and a university lecturer who is also an aromatherapist and a belly dance teacher. There's an interesting combination. Uh, she prefers Beck and she runs two successful wellness businesses in Bunbury, WA, and is about to publish her first book, and she is all mine for the next 30 minutes. Beck, thank you for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me, Annette. You're so welcome. So I'm interested, how do you go from being a medical scientist to aromatherapy? Like, is, is there a link there? <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of people... You know, think that I'm a walking contradiction. How can you be a scientist and also do this woo-woo stuff as well? Um, but when I got interested in um, essential oils and aromatherapy, I'd gone through a personal journey where I was looking for other ways to support myself that Western medicine just wasn't helping me. And um, I looked at complementary therapies and I'd always, always been interested in essential oils I used them as a teenager and um, I've got a very strong sense of smell. So it's something that sort of tapped into my um, my abilities. Uh, so I wanted to learn how do these things actually work because I was finding them effective for my own well-being. And when I looked into it, there was actually lots of research coming out about essential oils and it's not so woo-woo anymore. Um, to research my new book, um, I've read lots of different journal articles as well as textbooks. Um, at the back of my book, there's a huge list of, of um, references. So, yeah, it's it's something that's coming more into mainstream now that we've got more evidence, scientific evidence to back up how these things work. And there certainly is uh, a lot of research coming out that says that using essential oils can be just as effective if not more so than other medications for treating anxiety and depression and, of course, with less side effects. So it could be worth giving a go. Yeah, absolutely. So what is it about our nose, our olfactory system, that makes this such a uh, an, an intense and, and valuable process to, to balance our emotions and, and reduce our, our, our stress? Mm. So research shows that smell is actually one of the quickest ways we can change our mood and our behaviours. Um, so the way that the brain works to interpret smell is really fascinating. I go into it a little bit in the book, but I don't want to, you know, go on and on about the science. I could go on for hours. Uh, but the the way the uh, brain interprets smell, is this part of the brain, the limbic system, is is closely linked to the part of the brain that also in, interprets our emotions and also our memories. And you may have smell memories. So I have significant smell memories because smell has always been important to me. Um, but an example could be, you know, you get a whiff of a perfume that someone you love always wore and it brings back those emotions of love and remembering that person and how you felt around that person. So we can use essential oils in a similar way by building up um, feelings, uh, positive feelings attached to that smell so that when you sniff it again, it can quickly reinstate calmness and peace and reduce anxiety. So our, brains really are pretty, our brains are tricky little piece of equipment in there, isn't it? How it I'm can sure it is. It's totally fascinating and yeah, the research that I've been doing is totally fascinating um, how it all works. Uh, but there is that scientific evidence there about it too. So it's not um, it's not coming out of the woo -woo, woo realm now. Yeah, I, I think that's interesting. My family and I moved to the Gold Coast a few years ago and every time I go to the beach, I get out of the car and I go and... It reminds me of childhood. It reminds me of my mother who loved the beach. And it just puts, and I know I've said to my husband, since we've moved down here, we've all been so much calmer 
and more peaceful because we're constantly smelling that ocean smell that I, my, I think my brain's just going into zen mode all the time that's right and you know we've all heard that saying stop and smell the roses um and it's something that's been used in ancient cultures so recently i went to um I, I heard a talk by an aboriginal elder from here in wa and they mentioned that children when they get wound up are taught to go and sniff a particular bush that's quite aromatic, um, the emu bush, and then that helps the children to calm themselves down and also realise that there are ways and techniques in, in doing that. So it's, you know, something that's been around for a long, long, long time. Mm, absolutely. I know I've got a, a young son who has autism and I used to send him to school with a hanky covered in lavender and frankincense so when he got anxious, I'd say, just get that out and smell it because I found that it would calm him down. And instead of, you know, him getting suspended all the time, the teachers were going, well, what's happened with Quinn? And it's like oh, it's the oils I give him to smell and, like, they look at you as if to go, that's a bit weird. So you did mention before that it used to be considered quite woo-woo. And are you finding that a lot with a lot of those, you know, almost old-fashioned ways of, of dealing with so many things that that bother us um, in today's society and now becoming more accepted and more mainstream? Definitely. Because people are doing this research. So before when Western medicine, um, you know, there's a lot of doctors out there that will poo-poo all this uh, things they call the woo-woo stuff. But when you've got scientific evidence to back up the claims that you're making, um, you know, we're not making outrageous claims that essential oils are going to cure cancer or, you know, crazy stuff like that. It is a complementary medicine. So it complements what we can do in um, with other medis medical approaches as well. And so if someone comes to me, I don't tell them to, you know, stop taking the medication they're already on or, or stop doing the other things they're already doing. It complements it. And I have to say just use all of those things that, that are helping you add to your wellness toolkit. And certainly essential oils and aromatherapy is a great little thing to put in that toolkit. And as you mentioned, Annette, that's a beautiful story about your son. And I do quite a bit of work with children that have anxiety or um, conditions like ADHD or autism. And we're finding that simple calming techniques by using those smells really helps to... Um, bring them back down and, and find focus and calm. Mm. Because if you can find ways that are, you know, partic particularly if you are anxious or you're highly stressed, you know, they're like you're getting people to stop and meditate and you know, not that there's anything wrong with that is, is almost like a huge pattern interrupt and it's, it's hard to get people. But if you just introduce, like you can put it on in the background and nobody knows that you're doing it until everyone goes, well, I feel really happy and, and really calm, that you can kind of infiltrate people without them even realising it, can't you? That's right. So for myself, um, I would, I've got inhalers. They, they work really well. Or you could put oils on diffusing jewellery. And there's been times, you know, in a stressful meeting at work and I would be sat there just casually sniffing my wrist. <laughs> um, <laughs> And everyone's like, why are you so calm? And I'm like, well, you know, I've got, um, I'm, you can do it unobtrusively. So, you know, sometimes your emotions can hit when you don't expect, you know, in, in the shops. For me, my biggest emotion that I was trying to um, uh, cope with was grief. And, you know, you could be in the shopping centre and suddenly a song that was played at my uh, daughter's funeral would come over the speaker. And that wave of emotion would come over me. So something like um, pulling out a bottle or an inhaler of essential oils and just taking a moment to let that wave come over me and then let that pass away again was something that I could feel really well supported. Um, and it kind of gives you a bit of confidence as well, a bit of empowerment that, you know, if you've got that tool in your handbag, or your um, pocket that you can pull out and help you, that gives you a bit of uh, confidence that you are going to be able to get through that and help people 
get over things like agoraphobia, uh, social anxiety, just having that that little um, security blanket, if you like, in their in their pocket, knowing they've got something that can help them when they need it. It's quite profound that you have been on this incredible journey because I know that you've, you know, in the last five years you've had a lot to 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 deal with. You mentioned the passing of your daughter and your miscarriage and and lots of other things that that you have gone, okay, life shit, how do I deal with it? And gone looking very proactively for a way that you can manage that. So with the women that you work with, do you find that for many of them that they're open to almost that, okay, what can we just so dramatically different? And that's not to say that you've dealt with it and you've left it behind. It's really just that how can I cope better? Exactly. Um, something like grief, it never goes away. You carry with it, carry you it with you always, but you just learn ways of um, coping with it and dealing with it. Um, and perhaps for me, it was also about expressing it instead of suppressing it all the time. So uh, women I find, yeah, they, they've, they've kind of got left behind with Western medicine. My own experience was, you know, I could feel that I needed help, I needed support. I went and saw my GP and his, his offering was, which medication would you like? And, and you know, for me, uh, I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was experiencing a clinical condition. I was going through grief, which is a natural process that we all go through. And I was trying to seek ways to support myself. We also know that stress and anxiety are some of the biggest risk factors in other diseases. These things uh, change our biochemistry that lead us to develop things like um, the cancers, uh, autoimmune conditions and other chronic conditions. So I was really trying to be proactive in going, I want to seek some way to support myself so that I don't end up with those things happening to me. Um, the problem with our medical system at the moment, and I'm not reflecting badly on any particular doctor, it's but the fact is that today in Australia, we go and see our GP, we get a five to ten minute consultation. And how can they possibly get to the bottom of what's going on for us in that time frame? Mm. Even a double consultation, 15, 20 minutes. Um, yeah, so, you know, the only way the doctor felt that they could help was perhaps by offering medication and he said you know come back and talk to me anytime I'm like well a six minute conversation isn't really helping me so yeah. I went away I went and I went and saw a kinesiologist and for the same price as going to see my GP for the six minutes I saw her for an hour and a half and you know really felt supported connected and came away feeling like that treatment had done something for me so I think that's where complementary medicine can really be supportive of the other ways we can um, medically support ourselves. So the, what you're you're explaining and what you're experiencing is quite common for women and, and I guess men too is that, you know, the medical systems become this machine that you get in, they pump you out, you know, you've got 15-minute blocks and you walk away and you kind of like go, um what do I do now so being able to reach out to those complementary medicine um, complementary allied health professionals is is a quite a wonderful thing isn't it that, that now we're also more open to going okay we respect our medical profession you know they, they put so much time and effort into their learning but you don't just have to have one it's okay to have that mix because when you are grieving or you're stressed, like sometimes you just need someone to talk to. That's it. And, and the, I guess the other thing is it, even when medication uh, is needed and it's necessary, and I certainly don't um, push for no medication that has a place in, um, in all treatments, but uh, medication for anxiety is meant to be a short-term helper while you learn other ways to cope with anxiety and other um, emotions. So 
uh, the medication can help you get through a patch, but it's not designed to be used long term. And that's where looking for other ways to support yourself, such as the aromatherapy technique that I've developed or, or other ways that can support you, uh, get those in place so that when it's time to come off that medication, you know you've got other techniques behind you to help you cope with those emotions. So your business has grown because of your observation in your local community that that many are struggling with loneliness and emotional difficulties. And I guess that's even more so now after what we've been through with COVID, people separated from their families, people who live alone, who don't have anyone to reach out to. So what's your suggestion on how people can get through and start the process of, of healing yeah so i guess uh for me i i wanted to create that space for women that can where we can get together and reach out um feeling that isolation is is some of the the hardest parts of what we've been through uh i'm a my business is a partner of a um, healthy mentally healthy wa over here we have a partnership with uh, an organisation called Act Belong Commit, and we really advocate for what um, they put out there, which is um, you know find ways to uh, get out there and meet new people, interact, commit to something. It could be a sport, it could be a social group, it could just be a friendship group that you commit to seeing regularly, um, and find that connection and community, and. Uh, Doing active things with that within that community is things that promote your own self worth and well being. Um, yeah, so if looking for ways where you can reach out, support your own mental health, helping others because that's going to boost you up as well. Um, so I've got a group called Welcoming Women, which is uh, for women. We come together once a month, and we also have a Facebook group where we can chat outside of that where we support each other, we, we learn from guest speakers about different wellness techniques. And it's all about empowering women to find ways to support themselves. So where we we might be reaching out to our GPs or other services, my, um, my big vision is for women to feel empowered, to find ways themselves, to support themselves and what works for them as well as finding community and connection. Mm, they're really good points because it's easy to get stuck in a rut, isn't it? That I, I, I just know after, I mean, like we're in Queensland, we were allowed to be free fairly quickly, but I got used to not having to go anywhere. And now when I go, I kind of like, a, I went to a party the other day, didn't know anyone, and I walked in and went, I think I'm going to go home. This is scary. So... Can you give us a few tips on if you're going to equip yourself with your little own aromatherapy kit that you can take with you, what are some of the essential, essential oils that perhaps we should have in? Um, I actually pulled out three of my favourite oils to, to talk about today. So the first one is um, my absolute favourite oil is bergamot. Um, so bergamot is, belongs in the citrus family. Uh, it's interesting smell because it's got the, the D-limonene um, chemical, which has that classic citrus smell, but it also contains a lot of linalyl acetate, which is also a chemical found in lavender. So it's got a bit of that herbaceous smell to it as well. Um, bergamot's interesting because it's, it uplifts you while also calming you down. So it's great for things like depression where you you want to feel um, a bit more um, up, you, you want to feel uplifted, but you don't want to go, you know, jumping off the rafters either. You want to feel calm too. So it's a beautiful choice um, for that that sense. Um, is, that the, is that the Earl Grey tea? Yes, it also flavours yes. Earl Grey tea, yep. 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 Captain so, Picard um, loves that one on Star Trek, Live Long and Prosper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'd recommend bergamot. It's great for confidence building, finding motivation and also feeling feeling sort of whole or complete. 
through that smell. Uh, so that's a citrusy one. I also pulled out jasmine. So jasmine is a floral one, so a different different side again. And actually, to be honest, jasmine is not a true essential oil. It's an absolute because it gets extracted with a solvent rather than um, being produced like other essential oils. Uh, but that's okay. We, we, we fit it in with our collection. We'll let it go today. Yeah. And... Um, and it's very, it can be very expensive because you have to use so much blossom to make this extraction. Uh, but it's it's kind of a sacred oil because of that, I suppose. It, being floral, it's also quite warm, a musky, exotic aroma. Um, and it has very, very complex chemistry. So it makes it interesting and it also makes it blend quite well with lots of other different essential oils. Um, jasmine, I find, helps to promote optimism. Uh, also, self-awareness. So it's a good one to sort of sit with if you want to um, do some self-contemplation. And it's also beautiful for bonding with other people, for relationships, um, platonic relationships and also um, more intimate relationships. Uh, so that's a beautiful one. If, so if you're, going, if you're having your first date and you want the person to like you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it can be a little bit um, uh, aphrodisiac as well. So maybe leave that for second date. <laughs> well, all right. You don't want to get a bad name. <laughs> yes. Um, and the third oil I pulled out is uh, sandalwood. And there's actually a few different species of sandalwood. and um, it's grown in a few different places in the world and depending on the species and where it's grown, the chemistry can be quite different and it will have slightly different smell. So um, there's Indian sandalwood, Hawaiian sandalwood, and the one I've got with me today is West Australian and it's actually grown here in WA, a little bit further south from where I live, um, and it's just beautiful. And the problem with sandalwood is that to be able to extract the essential oil from the wood, you've actually got to cut that tree down. So we need to be careful about where we source our sandalwood and make sure it's um, you know, sustainable, which is why I like to choose West Australian sandalwood. So because it comes from a tree, you can think of strength, being tall, being balanced. And I find sandalwood is beautiful to bring in stillness and peace. Um, it's a beautiful oil to use during meditation or yoga for that balance and, and stillness. And emotionally, I find it's great for uh, promoting sensitivity, uh, inviting trust, bringing in forgiveness, and also for insight. So, again, for meditation, if you want to... Um, you know, ask a question of the universe, sandalwood might help you bring that in for yourself. So yeah, can we combine nice. these three together? Yes, definitely. Those three together would be beautiful. Mm. Um, so in my book I talk about um, I give 33 profiles of different oils that are great to use for emotional support, um, how to blend them together to create a beautiful aroma, and then, of course, how to use them to support your emotions. I've noticed that a lot of people are making skincare now are now including essential and therapeutic oils in their concoctions and it's just such a beautiful experience to wear those things on your skin rather than, you know, the you know, the mainstream chemicals. Do you think that we're going to see more and more of these type of therapies being used in not just, you know, complementary medicine, but like in mainstream stuff. Because I know I don't wear perfume anymore. I wear oils because I think I want to reduce the load on my body. So what better way than a bit of fractionated coconut oil and some, you know, I'm, go I'm going to make that blend now, Beck. That's, yeah, I think beautiful. That sounds like a beautiful blend. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely. And I think the bonus of using essential oils instead of the, um, the chemical extracted fragrances 
and synthetic fragrances is that the chemicals, the natural chemicals found in essential oils have their own therapeutic properties. So that's, again, why I also choose to use them for emotional management. They're not just there to um, smell nice um, and promote uh, emotional support in that way, but the chemicals themselves, we now know through research that's coming out, can promote um, other biochemical changes within the body that help to promote um, positive emotions and feelings. So um, things like uh, decreasing anxiety and, and increasing uh, chemicals, things like dopamine and serotonin that are going to make you feel uh, feel better. So, yeah, and, and again, with something like skin care, they've got those other therapeutic properties, antibacterial, they can be um, astringents, um, good to support the skin. So why not choose um, something that both smells nice and has therapeutic properties rather than a synthetic fragrance? Sounds like a win-win to me. When is your book coming out and what is it called? So my book is called Using Essential Oils for Emotional Management and it actually came out um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, early Jan uh, early December. So it's out now. You can find it um, across most of the usual book platforms like Amazon. Um, you can download it either as an ebook version or pick up a paperback. I particularly like the paperback because for something where you've got the essential oil profiles, it's kind of lovely to have the book lying around next to your essential oil collection so you can be, oh, well, which one should I put in my diffuser today and have a look at them? Um, and, of course, yeah. then you can make notes and highlight it and dog ear the pages if you need to or your favourite parts, yeah. That sounds awesome. You know, rub it with your favourite oil so you always go to that page. And I... Yeah. I I hear what you're saying. I mean, like I have got this huge thing of essential oils and I keep going to the same ones because I know how they make me feel. So it sounds like your book would be really good for someone like me who's looking to experiment and find different ways to bring different elements into the home, like you've got a kid who's studying or one who's feeling anxious or, you know, Christmas is coming to you know, have those in the background diffusing so nobody rips each other's heads off. Not that it's going to happen, family. <laughs> yeah, true. And, yeah, that was one of the inspirations to write the book and for some of the other work that I do because I see so many uh, women have collected up these beautiful um, collections of essential oils and they're probably worth quite a lot of money when you think about how much you've spent on each of those bottles. Um, and like you said, Annette, you tend to go for the same two or three favourites um, and the rest are sat sitting there. So I'm trying to promote different ways to use the essential oils. What are they for? What can they be used for? Different benefits to get to see those oils getting used because they are precious gifts from nature that we want to use to our advantage. So last question because once people get your book and, and I'm thinking maybe you might cover this, how do we work out the best oil to use in terms of quality? Because, you know, you can go into so many places now and there's all these little bottles. Like how do you go, I'm, I'm putting my money to good use and I'm buying something that's actually going to have an impact? It's a great question and I get it a lot. So I don't advocate for any particular brand specifically. Um so I, I suggest um, to look at the bottle itself. It should be an amber-coloured or dark blue so that the light can't get in. It, hopefully it would have the Latin name of the oil, the, the plant that it came from. So, for instance, for berg, bergamot, um, it might be labelled citrus bergamia uh, with the Latin name. So that's an indication that it's not a fragrance oil, not a synthetic, that it's a natural one. Unfortunately, um, we don't have any international or Australian standards of essential oils at the moment. So there's no um, clear definitive way of looking for quality. What I like to do is um, look at the uh, brand uh, online. Some of the brands will publish their quality control results. So if that's there, that's a really good indicator that 
they are uh, using high quality pure essential oils uh sometimes just giving it a sniff can give it away you can smell there's oh there's alcohol in the background of that um that's giving away that it's not great quality and of course you know ask around um other people if they've used that brand reach out to an aromatherapist and they might be able to point you in the right direction um yeah so there's you know it is hard to find a quality brand but um, I'm, I'm a bit of a brand whore myself. I've got three, <laughs> three, three oils that I pulled out this morning. One was from doTERRA, one was from Aussie Soap Supplies, and one was from Tinderbox, which is a local essential oil company here in WA. So, you know, some of them, I, I don't particularly like the, this oil from that brand, so I'll buy it from another brand. Um, yeah, so just use your nose and, and feel what you like. But yeah, choose something that looks that looks like it's labelled as a pure essential oil and not a fragrance oil. Yeah, I like, like that because the nose knows, doesn't it? It's like it sure sometimes does. you smell something and you go, I don't like that and that's a good reason to walk away. And we're going to walk away now because we've come to the end of our interview, but thank you so much. I've learnt so much. I can't wait to grab a copy of your book and put so all of those oils to better use. Beck Tichbon, thank you so much. And it's been amazing to talk to you. And if you want to connect with Beck, I've put her Facebook um, page into the chat box so you can go and check her out. I'm quite sure that she won't mind you tracking her down and to ask her more questions or to grab a copy of the book. So thank you for joining me. Thank you so much, Annette. It's been my pleasure. Absolutely. Everybody, we'll talk to you again soon. Have a great day.